So what's up there everybody, hope all is well. Today we're having a look at my setup that I use when I do shoot with the Panasonic S5 Mark IIx. Under all this gear, I do have the Panasonic S5 Mark IIx. And the reason why I use this camera for things like this is because I really do love the image that comes out of it. As a base, I use a small rig cage. And if you follow my channel, you do know that I'm a really big fan of small rig. And one thing that is really important when it comes to building a setup like this is to understand that not every setup will be perfect for everything you do. Uh, I tend to use a top handle very, very often, especially if I do need to uh, move around a lot, then I really love having that uh, top handle so I can with one hand take the whole setup and just walk away. However, the last shoots I've done have been very stationary. So this is the setup that I've been using, but I will show you the different handles that I do use because there are quite a few of them. With that said, it's really easy to, if you want to move, to hold your whole setup on this mo monitor mount. But actually it does work like a top handle if you don't want to run a gun a lot with it. So I actually use it to hold the whole setup uh, if you do need it. So I, I don't feel that I always need to have that uh, specific top handle because I do love having the monitor on top as uh, you can see here. And if you do add that top handle, the whole setup uh, becomes quite tall. So when I really do need to have the top handle, I use it, but if I don't, I just take it off. So as I said in the beginning, a lot of the things here are actually from small rig. So let's start with the matte box. This is the matte box mini, I think it's called. Um, a small matte box that I actually love a lot. It's so small, it doesn't weigh a lot, and it's lightweight, and it's uh, some, some of the parts are made from carbon fiber. So I really enjoy using that matte box. And if you wanna see a specific video on the matte box, uh, just go down to the description and I'll put up a link there. Another thing that I'm also using, and this is actually quite a new thing that the guys from Small Rig gave to me, it's their new follow focus. I'm not really sure the name of it, but I will have it in the description. And it's a little bit plasticky and it's very cheap. I think it's $150, but still it's the best manual follow focus that I've ever used. It has a ton of features and you can actually use it both with gears and without gears. And honestly, I feel that it's the best follow focus by far that I've ever used. It could probably be a little bit better made with metal on all parts, but still I think sometimes it's actually good that companies do use plastic because of uh, us having a, a lighter setup. So this follow focus, I'm not sure the name of it, you will see it here somewhere. Uh, the best follow focus I've ever used. And I'm actually thinking of making a dedicated video on this follow focus. On top, you can see that I used the Atomos Ninja. And also, if you've seen my videos before, you know I'm a big fan of the Atomos Ninja. And to the record the media, especially if I'm shooting ProRes RAW on the S5 Mark II X. I do use Angelbird SSDs, which do work great. And then also you do use this cartridge that Angelbird makes. Uh, it lets you use their CFast cards, which I do have a couple of, um, because I do shoot Blackmagic as well. And you can actually use the CFast cards as SSDs with the Atmos Ninja. And the, on the Atmos Ninja, I do have a cage, also this from Small Rig. And I do use like to use a cage because I know that monitors especially aren't really often very well made as cameras often do. So if I would drop this, I know that it will be safe. And looking at the monitor mount, this is actually a new monitor mount that I, I'm using. This is also from Small Rig and it has this quick connection called the Hawk lock which is really nice uh, it's really not easy to put on and put off and it's something that i almost wish i had more hawk locks uh, around the system but yeah this works great and i will probably try to get more of them at times i really do want to have a, a handle beneath so uh, sometimes i put it on sometimes i take it off but i really like to shoot from the hip and when I shoot from the hip, it's really nice to have that handle holding the whole setup from the side. And most of the time, I really love using the camera handles in themselves. They're often very sturdy and well-made. And also you have the shutter button there, so you don't have to think too much. So you can be sure if you want to change some of the settings really fast. Uh, as a battery solution, I'm using a V-mount battery from CG Sin. And this is actually a very nice battery for the for the amount of capability it does have. It's very small and nimble. Uh, it, this one is 160 watt hours, which is great. I really think that it's very important to, when you have a setup that allows you to have a bigger setup, especially if you want a little bit sta more stable shot, to use a V-mount battery. 
And the reason is that you always know that you won't have the different parts of your setup just die on you at different times. So that's why I really love using uh, a V-mount battery like this. And this plate from CG Sin is also something that I really appreciate and used uh, for maybe half a year or something. It has worked great. And the cool thing with it is that you do have different connectors. So you do have the normal D-taps, uh, two of them on both sides. You do have the 12 volts outputs. But the cool thing is that you have PD out uh, too. So you can power your, uh, your camera setup with the USB-C cable, which is wonderful. And if you do like to use non-manual follow focuses, you can power those as well. On setups like this, I really do love using manual focuses. But if you're looking to be able to control your setup from afar maybe you could go with a wireless follow focus system but having a plate for your v-mount with all these options will let you know that doesn't matter what type of uh, uh, an accessories you put on your setup you will know that you can power that through the setup so i'm really happy with the cg sin both the v-mount battery but also the battery plate and another cool thing with this v-mount battery is that you can actually charge it with a, a MacBook Pro charger and that's really nice so you don't have to get a dedicated V-mount charger if you already don't have one. And before we leave the CGCM V-mount battery, one thing that I really love is that you can actually see the exact percentage uh, that you have left on the battery. On a lot of other batteries, you most of the times can't see the exact percentage. You can almost just see the increments in four or five steps. And here you can see exactly how much battery life you do have. And as a base plate, I do use a small rig base plate as well. And that's if I really want to go from having this big setup to have a smaller setup. So if I just do like this, and I can shoot with a really small setup like this as well. So I can really fast go from one setup to another with this quick setup from small rig. As I said in the beginning, this setup changes basically from shoot to shoot, depending on what I really need. On the last few shoots, I haven't needed audio, so audio hasn't been important. So as you can see, I'm, I don't have any microphones here. Other people have actually done the, the audio bit, so I have just focused on getting the visuals for it. But if you need audio, you could of course put on the XLR1 from Panasonic on here, and then you do have to change the setup just a little bit. And also the same thing if you want to have an onboard scratch mic you can of course put it here in different ways so one thing that i not often talk about but i'm actually going to share which tripod that i'm using you can see that this is a sackler one and this is the sackler ace uh, it's basically one of the cheaper sacklers that are made and it's a, a tripod that i've been actually using for a while i do change up my gear very often but this is basically the setup or the tripod that that I have been using the most uh, the last year or so, maybe two years, uh, especially if I do want to have really smooth uh, footage while I'm panning. So I really love this tripod. Also, this is not a carbon fiber tripod. And I feel that a lot of the time when I'm out shooting, I, I, I don't have really the time to baby my gear and having aluminum, as I do have here is actually sometimes a benefit because aluminum is a, little, is a little bit more sturdy than carbon fiber. So I can throw it into my car or my cargo bike and don't be worried about the tripod getting busted. So also one thing, if you want a full review on anything that you see here that I haven't talked in another video, just let me know in the comments. So guys, I would love to know what you think of my setup and if there's actually anything you would change on it or if you have any advice for me to make my setup better. So as always, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.